2015, the year that laptops finally lost the bezel on their display. All right, so what we've got to take a look at here is the Dell XPS 13. This is the 2015 version. This is the laptop that we saw at CES back in January. This is a Dell laptop. It's an ultra portable 13-inch uh, laptop, basically in an 11-inch form factor. So if you're familiar with the 11-inch MacBook Air, it's like the 11-inch MacBook Air, but the screen size is comparable to that of a 13-inch laptop. And how they were able to do that was basically by eliminating the bezel around the LCD. The, the lid is basically all screen. There's not much of a bezel there to speak of. After seeing it and using it, I believe that all laptop LCDs will follow this design in short order. This is like when they added mice to laptops. Yes, once upon a time, laptops did not have an integrated pointing device. It was just a keyboard. And then somebody said, we need to fix that. And then Compaq tried to put a trackball in the LCD screen, and then that didn't work, and it was just a mess. And, and so here we are, and finally, somebody was like, we finally have the technology to eliminate the laptop LCD bezel, and thus was born this. You know, it's gorgeous. There really is no reason not to do it this way. The XPS 13 is a little thicker and heavier than I expected though, but it somehow doesn't feel bulky. It does feel solid and well engineered. The lid is equal parts of aluminum frame fused with a relatively thick touch glass. You can see this sort of looking at the edge, but it's fused so well that I don't detect any give at all, even pushing on the back of this. It feels like one piece. It feels like what I would expect something from Star Trek to feel like. Because of the changes to the LCD, the webcam has to be located in the lower left-hand side of the display. This is really the only sort of bezel area to speak of, sort of, is at the bottom of the display. So that's where they stuck the webcam. This is the maximum angle that the display can be opened to. The lower part of the keyboard is aluminum and sort of this carbon fiber. Dell says it's carbon fiber with touch-friendly paint or something, but it feels like carbon fiber and it doesn't really give when you push down on it. The only complaint I have here is that though Dell says that the keyboard travel is 1.3 millimeters, I'd say the last 0.1 millimeters of that feels like you're smashing the key into some sort of uh, <laughs> like oatmeal, I guess. It just... The way that those keys bottom out is just not very satisfying to me. Um, this, is a, this is really a nitpick, so don't read too much into that. The touchpad, however, is the largest that I've ever seen on a 13-inch Dell. It's also the best touchpad that I have ever used on any Dell, hands down. Dell has finally got the trackpad exactly right. The trackpad on the 2014 XPS um, was rubbish, and I'm glad to see that it has finally been fixed. On the edges are a USB 3.0 port with PowerShare. This means you can use a laptop battery to charge a phone, for example, even when a laptop is off. You just plug a cable into it, plug your phone into it. It's like you have an auxiliary battery pack. A mini display port jack. We tested this at 4K 60 hertz. Much to my surprise, it worked flawlessly the first time. Didn't have to update the drivers, didn't have to fiddle with it. Basically just took it out of the box, plugged it into a 4K display port 1.2 monitor, and it worked perfectly. I was blown away. Uh, it has one headset jack, uh, one Noble lock port, that's like the security lock port, and an SD card reader, um, and another USB 3 port on the other side. It doesn't have USB 3.1, and the power adapter is just a normal, you know, micro barrel style DC adapter. The power brick, though, is tiny and really lightweight. It comes with both a power cable that goes from the wall to the brick, and this little sort of uh, adapter that lets you just sort of clip it on to the end of the power brick and then you can just plug it directly into the wall. I thought this was a nice touch. A lot of people sort of expect this now and about half the laptops out there come with this arrangement where you can use a cable or the wall adapter. People that travel a lot tend to, tend to prefer sort of the wall adapter because they don't have to keep another cable with them and the way that the cable wraps around the adapter is pretty neat. The cooling situation on this laptop is, is pretty good. On the bottom of the laptop there are two raised rubber feet. This has the effect of sort of lifting the laptop off of the work surface that you're working on. Running almost the entire width of the laptop is an air vent that's designed to pull air in from under the laptop. Now normally this air will be exhausted um, in the LCD hinge up. So when the LCD is open there's a gap between the LCD uh, hinge area and the back of the laptop and so the air, the warm air will be blown out there and it'll just exhaust out up naturally. Even though this laptop is not as thin and light as offerings from other vendors, I think it's thin and light enough. It is remarkably sturdy. It really feels solid, you know, in my hands. It really feels like I can carry it around and I can be a little bit rough with it and it's not going to break. It doesn't give in my hands. It doesn't really flex. It doesn't do anything weird. 
the RAM is soldered on, so whatever RAM you order it with is whatever RAM it's gonna have from now until the end of time. But our friends at iFixit tore this thing down and the internal MSATA hard drive is not. So theoretically that could be replaced. And the replacement for the MSATA hard drive really didn't look like it would be that challenging, although we haven't broken down this model yet. Another neat thing that's worth a mention is that this laptop is also available with Ubuntu. Now Ubuntu is the GNU Linux operating system, uh, which is cool if you're into that kind of thing. Although a lot of people seem to be opting to swap the mini PCI wireless card. That's one of the other removable components on this with something that is better supported than Ubuntu. It's weird because the one that this ships with is supported in Ubuntu, but apparently it's buggy or flaky or something when the laptop wakes uh, from sleep or in other situations. And so the consensus on the forums right now seems to be to just swap the hardware. But I would be surprised if that's not fixed in short order. And it does work out of the box, it's just an annoyance. Overall, I'm really impressed with this laptop. This is a 13 inch laptop in an 11 inch form factor with a full size keyboard, you know, for a 13 inch form factor and a 13 inch display. The display is a gorgeous 3200 by 1800. It is amazing, I think all displays need this. Now Dell doesn't actually let you get the 3200 by 1800 display unless you also get the touch version. If you don't get the touch version, you're only gonna get 1920 by 1080. So if you're gonna get one of these, be sure to get the touch screen and make sure that you're getting the 3200 by 1800 variant of the screen. Otherwise, you're only gonna get 1920 by 1080 and I think you'll be disappointed by that. Well, that's been the overview and quick benchmarking of the Dell XPS 13, the 2015 edition. Be sure to check out those benchmarks at techsyndicate.com. And if you've got one of these or you picked one up and you have some thoughts or you're running Ubuntu on it or some other flavor of Linux and uh, you just wanna chat about it, head on over to the forums at techsyndicate.com. I'm Wendell, I'm signing out and I'll see you there. Music